Howdy again, it's Mr. Pete, and this is episode number 97B, the answer portion of my What Is It Mystery Tool series. So, let's get started here. What are these items? There are about 8,000 people that watch this, and about 200 or less actual comments or guesses, but I was surprised at how many of them were correct on all of them, because I thought that, like this, was really an obscure item, but I guess not. I was shocked at how many had this correct, and this is a foot warmer made of soapstone, and it would have been used in early automobiles, horseless carriages before they had heaters, and in uh, uh, carriages and wagons and so on for women. It would hold its heat for quite a while, but I doubt more than 15 minutes, and it is, yes, soapstone, not unlike the soapstone that you use in welding or metalworking to mark. It doesn't show up on here, does it? But soapstone comes in all different shapes, round, square, and the flat that you are probably the most used to. Now these were also used as bed warmers. Let me show you a picture out of an old catalog real quickly if you can bear with me. Okay, this is a reprint copy of the 1902 Sears Roebuck catalog, and there it is. Maybe they actually ordered this one out of this catalog, but the one I just showed you on the bench here is an 8x10, and you could buy it for 19 cents. Go ahead and read that description there if you're in the mood, but right above it you will notice that uh, they sold soapstone griddles. So there's a round one and a rectangular one. They were super cheap also. And it says that there's no grease required because, you know, this soapstone is incredibly slippery, isn't it? And just imagine my lady riding around in her little carriage with her favorite horse pulling it. And by the way, the carriage cost $35. But her feet would get real cold, wouldn't they? And so when you were harnessing up uh, the horse and getting the carriage all ready and getting the snow off of it, in the meantime you'd have your foot warmer setting on the kitchen range warming up toasty hot. And of course your wife was dressed up hot, incredibly hot, like that in 1902. And she was wearing these very sexy high heels back then. You know, men liked high heels then too. But imagine how thin those leather soles were, so she was trying to keep those footsies warm. Boy, did I get sidetracked. Okay, let's use this soapstone. How about that? And that's how much I wore the soapstone down writing my name. But I wanted to show you one more thing. I know I'm beating this subject to death, but here is another piece of soapstone, round. Have no idea what it's for. It's got like a staple in there. But what I really wanted to show you is that soapstone was, and I don't know if it still is, a source of talc. T-A-L-C, like baby's, uh, Johnson's baby powder. So, it doesn't take too much to make that talc. There it is. And boy, is that slippery. Oh, how I love the way my children smelled when they came out of the bathtub and my wife had powdered them. All right, enough on soapstone, but you know what it is. I'm not sure where it's mined. I think Canada. I was semi-shocked at how many people knew what this was, and I suspected that it was the arbor out of a horizontal mill, uh, milling machine, namely an atlas, because it's a number two Morse taper. Also, it's number two in this series here, not that that matters. But if we take, to, to prove that, here's a, a drill sleeve. Because several people said to me that uh, this is, if this is a brown and sharp taper, it's off a Benchmaster. Uh, a milling machine, but I suppose it fit other brands too, as long as it's a number two. And one thing I wanted to talk about now, I know I've beat this subject to death over the years, but we have had arguments and disagreements between viewers and me of what is the purpose of a tang. I always thought it was almost 100% to drive or prevent this from slipping in a quill and so on. And oh, no, 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 it, uh, all the, the, the taper holds it. No, it doesn't. And on this, look, at we got lugs right here that would do the actual driving. Also, there's a, a threaded hole there because there would be a drawbar pulling this into the taper and then 
uh, lugs going into these little slots so it would be a positive drive. Would it drive without that? Not with this three inch cutter. I bet it would slip within a microsecond. So this is necessary. However, now we're not talking about lathes. We're talking about milling machines. And yes, this is an Atlas product. And interestingly enough, one Mr. J. Miller out of Crawford, Texas sent me the repair parts list because they made this in both 7 8 diameter and 1 inch is what I have here and there is the mating part on the milling machine itself. You can see those pins which I just call lugs fit into uh, these little slots right here or grooves. And yes, there's the Atlas milling machine, and you can see the arbor on it. This machine is much smaller than what you might think from the picture. And thank you, Jay Miller, for sending me this sheet, or a PDF of it, or whatever it was. But, uh, and this is going to Alabama. A man asked me if he could have this, so I forgot what, he, what part of Alabama is, but this is Alabama bound. And item number three, a lot of people knew what this was, but there's all different kinds of names for it. But the official name, as far as I can get it, is a hollow auger. Some people call it a tenon maker. Now that's T-E-N-O-N. -N. So you can make a tenon of any size that you see right here. These would be too small for wagon wheels, but they would be used typically on chair rungs. And there, there's a depth stop here. So it would turn square material basically into round material is what this does. And it would be turned, of course, this is not a power tool, although you can buy modern power tools for making log furniture and so on. Uh, you would mount this, of course, in a brace and do it strictly by hand. Let me show you a catalog picture, and I'll be talking more about this in the following this and that, or what is it, because I have the companion tool to this, which I haven't shown yet, although probably most of you can take a guess as to what that looks like. Let me show you a catalog picture. Okay, here's the 1924-1925 Monkey Wards catalog out of Chicago. So this is a hundred years old, and this is original. This is not a reprint. Pretty awesome. Not in real good shape, but it's so interesting to look in these old catalogs. I like looking at old tools in these catalogs. Notice that these are Cleveland drills that they're selling up here. Genuine Cleveland drills. No fiddling around with fake stuff. Uh, maybe they came from China. Who knows? So on the same page where you can buy a lakeside brace. By the way, lakeside was their name years ago for tools. Kind of like Craftsman for Sears. You probably knew that. But here are two adjustable hollow augers. I, of course, would be buying the one on the right because it's only a dollar and six cents. I could not spring for the one on the left at two fifty. That's probably about a day's wage almost. Read the description there if you want. But that's an, uh, what this item is, an adjustable hollow auger. I think they're semi-collectible. Okay, this item here, and actually it's just a portion of a door closer, and I am shocked at the number of people that knew what this was, although I did give a clue. I said you walk under one every day many times, so I think maybe that was, was it, because I can't imagine that many people recognizing this, but, but they did. So this is owned by my buddy Andy. You've seen him in some of my videos, and he wants this back. But for about 15 years, he worked for a door closer company. And so he's really an expert on door closers. In fact, when I went into his house, he's got about uh, six or eight patents on the wall for portions of, uh, of door closers. You know, it's a, they're a very useful item. All doors in public buildings are controlled by door closers. So in a minute here... I've got a clip of Andy explaining how this works, because I sure can't. You may remember that I used to have a series called uh, What Makes It Work? So I've had this for 15 or 20 years. This is a door closer, and I was going to make a cutaway and show you how it works, even though I don't know myself. But, you know, I'm going to put a link. Just last week, there was a video that came in my feed of a man talking about door closers and how they work and the importance of them and all that. 
I know this is a mundane item and maybe nobody cares, but this is a, a high quality one, probably cost $100 or more, not the $4 ones that you buy at Maynard's for your screen door, you know, the piston type, I hate those. But the interesting thing about this device is that it has coarse teeth, gear teeth, and fine teeth combined. I hope that Andy does a job of explaining why that is. So let's cut to that right now, and that will be the, the end of the video. Okay, Andy's going to explain the purpose of this gear, this strange gear. You know, this gear set is intended for a single arm closer to overcome the uh, low closing force. So by changing the radius of the gear teeth, as the door opens, you get a, uh, it, it, the door doesn't get harder to open, it stays consistent. And then they, because of the radius change, you know, where it's in close there, they have fatter teeth. And then when you get out farther, you have a mechanical advantage, so they get away with a, small, uh, a smaller tooth. So which is the open and closed position? This would be the closed position. That's closed. And that's, that's, open. that's the open position. Very interesting. So now you know the purpose of this, I'm going to call it a weird gear set that I've never seen before. Yeah, they're changing both the... Uh, the pitch radius and the diametral pitch. Boy, whoever invented that must have had some sleepless nights. Thank you, Andy. Yeah. Normally, okay, the other way. Awesome. Well, thank you for watching. Remember, I have 1,500 videos out there. Tell your friends and leave a comment. That helps me a lot. Also, a thumbs up helps the channel a lot. This is Mr. Pete saying so long. I'll see you next time.